All right. Um, I'm Hunter. I'm one of the uh, community leads here at Onyx Off-Road. Um, I get to do some cool events, work with some ambassadors, and get to help host this master class. Um, my ride of choice right now is a, a fifth gen power wagon. So um, full size four by fours are, are kind of my thing. Um, but uh, have dabbled in uh, the pre runner side. Um, we're really from Southern California. I'm coming to uh, be alive uh, just outside of Austin, Texas right now. Cool. And I am uh, Jake. I'm also on the community team. I'm going to be handling the app demos for today's session. Uh, I am based out of Missoula, Montana, um, and I'm going to be coming from the perspective. Um, I do all things off road, but mainly in the two wheel and snowmobile world. So if there's any sledders or, or dirt bikers out there, I'll be able to answer those questions specifically. But happy to have you all on board. So a quick rundown of what we're covering this evening. Um, we're going to jump right into the app. Uh, Jake's going to walk you through the web map and the, uh, the phone app. Uh, so we recommend having your device um, open so you can kind of follow along as we run through this. We are covering kind of a, a wide range of um, skill level with uh, on X off road. Um, so if there um, is something you feel like, oh, this is too basic, we will get into the more uh, the meat and potatoes of it. Um, but if you've never opened the app, uh, we'll, we'll go through it and get your bearings on it and get a, get a good feel of what you're looking at. And then we'll um, run through it all. And then we'll uh, run through a scenario of uh, kind of scouting out and planning for uh, a trip. And then uh, if you stick around, we're doing a giveaway and we'll have more info on that as we move along through the session. And then the last uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, we're gonna go into the live Q&A. And that's gonna be uh, us um, answering questions as we go through it. We'll do some demos, um, get a little bit more specific. Um, we also have our team uh, answering uh, the Q&A as well. Um, so we're, we're here to, to teach you guys. We really appreciate you taking time to, to learn more. Uh, we love doing these and uh, we're always excited to, to hear where Onyx is taking you or where you're planning on having it take you. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what we got going on this evening. And then just a reminder, this is being recorded. Uh, so it's gonna be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So if there's anything that um, you wanna see again or we covered too quickly, as we do have a good amount of information to cover, uh, this will be on our Onyx Off-Road YouTube channel and uh, you'll be able to, to watch it there reference anything that, that we're covering tonight. And uh, with that, we'll, we'll kick it off and uh, we'll jump right into it. Hunter, can I have the uh, screen share, please? All you. Awesome, there we go. All right, sweet. Uh, Hunter, how's that look? I see it. Looking good. Okay, cool. So as Hunter mentioned um, just a few minutes ago, this is going to be very like square one. So for those of you who are a little more advanced, um, just be patient. We will get into more of it, but we're going to start at like, this is the first time you download the app today. You're at home, you're on your desktop, you, you open it, and this is what it's going to look like. Um, just ignore these waypoints right now, because this is one of my actual personal accounts. So you're obviously not going to have the waypoints in here, um, but this is what it is going to look like uh, when you first open it. Um, so without even zooming in, touching anything, diving into any tools, I actually want to hang out at this, this zoom level for a second. So we get a lot of questions are like, all right, what, what the heck are all, what's all this stuff going on? What's all this blue stuff? Um, so these actually these blue little icons that you see kind of scattered throughout those, you can think of them as like hotbeds for trail systems um, and specifically our featured trails, what we'll dive into a little more in depth later. But as you can see, they're they're all over. So if you're just curious, you know, you can scroll in, zoom in, and they're to draw your eye on on these featured trails. Um, so that's what those are about. And then you'll notice when I zoomed in, some trails start coming to life. Um, some colors start happening. Um, again, we'll we'll dive in and cover all these what these mean. But this is what you should be expecting to see when you start zooming in and playing around with the map. Um, so real quick, um, I'm going to go over um, some basic functionality before we zoom in and start clicking on stuff. 
Um, so right here we have our standard search bar. Um, and I apologize if my cursor is a little laggy. I'll try to have it hang out here for a sec. But in the top left corner, you're going to see a search bar. You can click on it. You can either search by location. So like I just searched Green River, Utah the other day. It will pull it up. Um, something else you can do in here, you can actually input coordinates straight up in here. Um, that's another cool feature if you got waypoints saved on other stuff or you just want to look at what, a, what coordinates are, you can pull it up right here. And another cool thing is you can actually toggle over to the landowner. So this is actually going to pull up um, landowner names. You can search by first and last name. It's pretty accurate. And it's going to pull up a list based on where you're at in the map. So if I put in my name, I'm probably going to be top of the list because I live right, right, right here, right? So um, that's something to consider. And then actually on the landowner topic, if, if uh, some of you are out there right now searching for your for your home right now, then if you see a little data um, out of date, we hear all the time like, hey, my property, my, my name's not correct. I just moved in a couple months ago. That's actually inputted from the county. So when the counties update their records, that's actually what feeds into our data system. So just know that if you're searching your house right now as we're chatting um, and you don't see your correct name, just be patient. It'll be there soon. Um, okay, cool. So out of the search bar, um, we actually have, uh, oops, I didn't mean to click on that. So if you actually go down to this bottom left hand corner, you're going to see this little arrow right here. Click on this. This is where all your account settings are going to be. This is like, you know, Hunter was saying, if you have uh, account questions and that kind of thing, and you're on the phone or on the line with uh, CX, or like, hey, what's going on? My accounts, my email's off. A lot of the times the email is actually mistyped, and then you can go into your account right here and be like, oh, shoot, I put a, I put a one after, you know, my name or whatever the case may be. You can confirm that here. Another really cool thing in here is the actual, um, this is where you're going to find your legend. Um, you don't necessarily need this legend because this software is completely interactive, which we'll dive into in a little bit. But if you're someone that likes to scan, scroll, and look, um, this is where you'd find the legend. Um, it has all the information, everything that you're looking at, what we consider a high clearance 4x4, what we consider a full, uh, full width road, all that, groom sled trails, um, land areas, rec sites, all the good stuff is in here. So um, keep that in mind for the map legend. Also, if you come into settings here, this is where um, if you like decimal, DMS, or UTM, uh, you can change that here. You can also click this if you like a crosshair instead of the mouse cursor. Um, you can hide your coordinates if you want. Um, you can do imperial metric. Um, so there's, this is where you're going to kind of customize this in, uh, to your liking here. Um, Okay, and then for the purpose of this demo, we are actually going to be in dirt mode. Um, we'll get into snow mode in a little bit, but for right now, we're actually going to dive in what it would look like in dirt mode. Um, so I'm actually going to come into Missoula, Montana, where I am at right now at the Onyx office. Um, all right, so... Now, when we're at this Zoom level, you can really see these colors and trails and stuff just starts coming to life at this point. Um, if you don't know what something is, um, like you're like, oh, hey, what's going on with University Mountain? Why, why is this all green? You can simply click on it. It's going to pull it up. And oh, look, that's Lolo National Forest. It's going to tell you the acreage. Um, just this is really good to know if you're, especially if you're a camper, um, because uh, BLM land is is pretty lenient with how you can camp and that kind of stuff. So when I'm searching for stuff in the desert, that's traditionally what I'll look for. I'll look for BLM land. Um, but again, if you don't know anything, um, just click on it. So we're going to do this, this little chunk right behind me. So that's going to be actually the city of Missoula owns that. Um, if we want to get even more, more di di detailed and dive into this thing, um, you can zoom in even more. And then this is actually going to be um, the elite product, if I didn't already say that. But this is when you're going to start seeing all these little red squares popping up. And these are actually private land boundary lines. So if we zoom in all the way to the building I'm in right now. You can actually see the on X building. We even have a little X on top of our building. Pretty cool there. Um, but again, all interactive. So if you don't know what this is or you want to find a landowner, you can click on this. And this building actually is under an LLC, um, a Missoula tax address. So you can do this for anybody. Um, this really comes in handy if you're if you're not sure if you're crossing through, say, some desert country and you see a sign and you're like, hey, what the heck? You know, I thought this road continued. 
you can pull this stuff up and be like, actually, yeah, a new, a new ranch just bought this section and now I can't pass through this ranch. Or there's, there's those use cases that it's really, really important to know your private land boundary lines. Um, okay, now I'm gonna zoom back out and then kind of start going over some actual features. So I am gonna start out with, uh, we're gonna do tools in a little bit, but I'm gonna start out with this discover tab. So if you're new to an area, like say this example of Missoula that we're using, say you're going to Missoula and you're like, all right, um, I, I really want to off-road. I have no idea where to go. Um, I don't know what trails are. I don't know what's legal, all that stuff. This actually, this discover feature is your best bet. You're going to click on this and it's automatically going to populate trails based on where you are oriented on the map. So if you'll notice, this large camp road is closest to where I'm zoomed in. And if you play with the app or scroll around the app, you will see those nearby trails change based on where you're toggled. Um, so super, super powerful tool um, that gets you out exploring new trails that you never even knew were there. Um, and you can actually click on, let's say we want to go to large camp. Boom, pulls it up gives you some stats on this one. And actually Large Camp Road happens to be uh, a featured trail, which is a perfect time to dive into green versus blue. Um, green versus blue, in this case, you'll notice that there's actually both green roads. So that those are saying those are open roads right now. But when there's a blue highlight around the areas, this is gonna be called a featured trail. So when you're scrolling this trail card, you're actually going to see some pretty sweet stats, photos, and these are actually taken by our trail guides. So really accurate descriptions here. Um, you know exactly what you're getting into. They'll pull up a list of nearby trails in this area. Um, you can share this stuff too. If you're like, hey, I found, you can send it to a buddy. Hey, I found Large Camp Road. Um, you can send it. If I were to send this to Hunter, it would pull up on his app. Um, and then we'd be on the same page. You get the same road. Um, so Discover, really powerful. Um, this works anywhere. Um, you know, keep in mind if you're if you're an East Coaster, you know, there's not going to be as many trails, of course, than like we have out west with all this public land. Um, so it might not look as impressive, but it is an extremely powerful tool. Um, next thing here, we're going to dive into the filtering options. So if you see my cursor at the top of the screen right here, you're going to see activity dirt mode. Uh, we're going to actually dive into this. And like I mentioned earlier in the call, uh, I'm a, I'm a two wheel guy. Um, and so I will hunt out single track. So this is where you would come in and do that. If that were something that you would want to do, you'd come in here, filter dirt bike. And then if you see our local riding area, which is blue mountain, you're going to see the single trap pop up. Um, and then you're good to go. Um, and this is also where you're going to add your map layers. If you have premium, you will not see this private land toggle. Um, but the active wildfire layer will be on there too, um, which I'll show you what a fire zone actually looks like. This is also a super powerful tool. But um, one thing to remember when you're toggling in between these things, um, let's go back to dirt mode, is I don't forget to put um, all back on because even if you know, we all know that you can ride, especially if you have a plated dirt bike or dual sport or whatever, you can actually ride all those roads. And so if you're like, what the heck, what, what happened to all these trails and roads It's probably because you still have single tracks selected. So after you scroll around, search out some single track, go back to all or high clearance or whatever. I just usually will keep them all on. Um, so that is that for filtering and activities. Um, and actually, I don't know. Let me scroll up north. I know we have a fire up north of us right now, but I don't know if it's still active. Okay, yeah, it is still active. So for the fire layer that I mentioned that you can toggle on, I always keep this on, especially living in Montana, um, Idaho. I mean, in California, especially we get bad wildfire seasons. And so this is really cool. If you were planning on a camping trip, um, this, this fire actually in particular isn't that big. Um, but the, we just had a couple massive ones that, that were going for almost all of August. Um, so anyway, you can pull this up, click on it. It'll tell you the name of the wildfire. It got actually updated today. Um, current acreage right now is 20% contained, 85. Um, it'll kind of give you the incident management, who's taking care of it. Um, so super, super powerful. And then when you see these, um, when the fires actually get bigger, you'll start to see a the actual pattern of the fire. So keep that in mind, especially if you're over in this part of the country, um, super, super handy there.
All right, let's scroll back to Missoula. Sweet. Okay, and the next feature that I want to dive into, and it's actually the most important feature of this whole demo. Um, so if you have your phone open or your web map open, I'd encourage you to follow along here, um, and that is offline maps. Um, offline maps is what makes our software super powerful. Um, it will make your phone function completely like it has full bars um, with zero service. Um, so if you know, for some of you that you're like, hey, I know I'm going on this camping trip, I'm, I'm venturing out into the desert or into the mountains, I know there's gonna be bad service there, you're gonna go ahead and download your offline map. So for the purpose of this, let's just pretend um, Missoula actually, let's pretend Missoula has no service. Um, so we know here, we know we're gonna explore Missoula and there's no service here. You're actually gonna go into here, on this far left side, you're going to see offline maps. You're going to click on this offline map. These are all my old ones right now, but you're going to go new, new offline map. And right here, this is where you are going to see the map resolution um, options here. Now, what this means is how detailed you want them. So you can scroll this around and kind of tee up your zone that you think you're going to be in. And you know, like a 10 mile with a medium resolution is actually pretty dang good. Um, but I'll do like, if I know I'm gonna do a short ride or something, I will actually go into the five um, and I'll download that area. It's super fast. So you're gonna tee this up. You come in here, you can name the map. All right, let's do that Missoula. And then you can type notes. And I'm not gonna save it now cause it's gonna take a minute to download, um, but it's pretty dang quick. Um, so you can go ahead and do that. And then when you open it up in your mobile app, you're going to see that exact same offline map already teed up. Now, you're still going to have to download it on your phone, um, but you will see because um, it's a little easier on, on when I have this desktop view to kind of be thinking, thinking ahead, thinking of your offline zones. And then um, another tip that I that I like to tell people. Um, so say Missoula, right? We have our five mile resolution here. Let's just say there's a chance that, oh, you know, I don't know, I might go up in here, I might explore out of that. I will always do a 150 around, like see all these green boxes that just popped up. These are actually personal offline maps I have. And so you can see here, there's boxes within boxes. Um, this just means like my, my small boxes are gonna be higher resolution. And if for some reason I get out of those green boundary lines, I will still at least be covered enough to figure out where I am. Um, it's not going to be perfect satellite imagery, but you're going to be covered, um, you know, versus if you have these fives, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be incredible. Um, super, super detailed. Uh, you can come in here, scroll, scroll, scroll. So like this is a ride that I did inside of five. So this is, this is what it's going to look like um, on your phone without cell service. So this is super detailed. Um, it is plenty to get you to know where you're going. Um, get you your way back out to the truck, all that stuff. Um, so offline maps, um, and then we'll go over it again in mobile just so you guys see what it looks like teed up in mobile. Um, but that is it for offline maps. Now let's hit this. Sorry, the computer is a little, Wi-Fi is a little laggy right now. So I'm gonna hit this bottom right button and then that just pulled me back to Missoula to orient myself. Um, okay, we're gonna get out of offline maps. And then the next feature that we are going to cover um, is on this left, which is below offline maps, which is my content. So my content, this is where, this is where everything's gonna be, um, every waypoint, every track, every area, every line that you made or, or had shared to you, this is where this is all gonna live. Um, this is where you would also import and export GPX files. Um, so you can come in here and see this import export button and you dive into these three dots. You can select stuff, export all these files, import files. So if you guys have tracks from other, um, you know, from a Garmin or something like that, and you're like, hey, I want to try them out in, in on X. this is where you would come. So you'd come to the my content and you'd in, upload it. Super simple, click and drag a file over, uh, which I'm sure most of you have done, um, but super easy there. Um, and this is also, this is a good time to actually talk about, so like on this account in particular, I have almost 400 waypoints in this one. Um, this is where, 
photo waypoints are really going to pay off. Um, I, I don't have photo waypoints on all of them. Sometimes I'll just, you know, my camp ones will be kind of, you know, similar and all that stuff. But you can see, like, when the waypoints actually have photos attached to them and you're scrolling through this kind of stuff, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that campsite. Um, so, when you start, when you guys start customizing your offline maps, I mean, I have some account, I have another account with thousands of waypoints on it. And so what get ahead of your waypoints organization. So like choose, like if I want to go fly fishing and it's water related, I'm going to pick light blue or dark blue. If I'm going to be snowmobiling, I use purple. If I'm going to be dirt biking, I use black. So like start to get your own little cadence down. And so when you see and you have thousands of waypoints on the app, you're like, oh yeah, cool. Those are my, those are my sled zones. And that will actually help you too, because you can filter by, hey, I only want to show purple waypoints only, only my sled zones. That's all I want to see right now. So it's not messy. So that is a good, a good tip um, for while you're into this, my content. Um, same deal here um, with the tracks and areas and lines. You can actually now, this is a pretty new feature. You can actually click this new folder um, and say, say I'm planning a trip to Moab next week and I got all my Moab potential campsites. I have all my Moab um, areas that I want to check out, my offline maps, all that. You can actually come in here and organize this. So like if this was my Moab folder, go ahead and name it. You can save it. And then now you can share that whole folder, which is pretty dang cool. Um, sweet. And then we're going to actually get into some tools at this point. So I'm going to scroll back in here right on top of the building. All right, cool. So moving on tools, far right, far right corner of the screen. So right here you have your line distance tool, your area shape, your waypoint, your photo waypoint. Um, this is where... If you want to use a line tool, this thing can do this thing can do a lot of cool stuff. If you just want a straight up line of distance or waypoint to waypoint or whatever, you can mark this. Save that. Oh, that's 894 yards. You can come in here, you can use free draw, you can change your line color, you can change your line weight, label it, um, whatever you want. This is this is pretty handy, especially if you're trying to figure out, oh, shoot, like how far, how far um, do I have to go to the next waypoint or something? You can kind of get an idea and map that out. So very powerful tool there. Um, next one is going to be area shape. Now, this one's actually really cool. Um, so let's just say, I know this is not allowed, but let's pretend that University of Montana golf course had a little campground right here. Let's just pretend. Um, they wouldn't be happy about that, but let's take it. Um, so this is where this area tool can be really cool, especially if you're in large groups, there's four fifth wheels, you got a bunch of side-by-sides, you got a bunch of big rigs, whatever. Um, you can actually mark and measure areas like say, oh shoot, you know, we have five fifth wheels coming in, like this tiny little spot of grass, like, can we all fit? You know, you can do stuff like that. Um, you can change it and you can share this, be like, hey, Hey guys, like this is our, this is super helpful in the desert. If you had friends to send this to you, like, Hey, this is where our campsite is roughly going to be. You can make your box. Um, this is, this is super handy and make sure everyone has the box and they're at right, cool. Like I know where the campsite is. Um, so another awesome feature, same deal, name it. Um, you can free draw this if you want. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this one. Um, anyway, really cool. And then the other one is waypoints. So I'm sure all of you um, are familiar with waypoints, but this is where you would drop this right now. And like using that same campsite example, like, hey, you know, everybody, we're gonna camp right here. This is where, um, backing up to when I said, it's really important to start getting ahead of your um, waypoint organization. Mm -hmm. So you can come in here, um, select more, and let's just, you know, all these cool customizable waypoints, um, there's a lot of good stuff in here, non-ethanol fuel, uh, riding areas, all this stuff, uh, open gates. That's a good one, but you can go ahead. Um, let's go, let's just mark this one camp. So mark this one camp, come down here. Let's just say, I don't know. Everyone starts li liking blue camp icons, change it to blue. 
Um, you come back up here, label this. You know, we can do U of M golf course, something like this. You can save this waypoint. Um, so boom, there you go. It'll give you the coordinates. Now you can either copy and send these coordinates directly from here if you want to share it, or this is when you would come down and actually hit the share feature. So let's pretend like we're actually exited out of it. So say you're like, all right, here, here's the campsite for tonight. We're going to click on this. You're going to go here. It's going to pull up U of M golf course. You're going to go here, share. It'll say, this is view only. Um, and then you're going to copy this link and you can either text this, email this, however you want. Um, and then the person will open it and then they actually will have to be an Onyx user, just a heads up, um, but they can start a seven day free trial. No problem. If they wanted to pull this waypoint up. Um, so that's where you would share there and get coordinates. Um, this is also where you would add photo waypoints. Now this is, will be uh, a little more obvious when I switch to the mobile, because then I can actually put a photo to the to the waypoint. Um, it's a little slower on desktop, but this is where you would do it. You would add a photo here. You can add like a, you know, hey, a cool campsite logo or whatever. Um, that's where you do it. Um, now, the last thing I wanted to cover before we move on to mobile um, is 3D mode. Um, so 3D mode, we'll go back to the office right here. So 3D mode actually is going to live right down here next to the zoom, uh, zoom in and out buttons. You're going to click on here. You're going to see 2D, 3D, and then you're going to see satellite, hybrid, or topo. Um, a lot of people like topo, especially if you're if you're searching for uh, lake spots or spots with water. Um, I would recommend scouting in topo because it's going to make that blue water pop. Um, and I've been scrolling on satellite and you'll miss lakes because like the shading of that image taken that day, it actually kind of blocked the, the lake. Um, so use topo and it's like, oh, boom, look at all these lakes up here where I was going camping. So anyway, this is where you toggle in between maps. Um, and also for, I actually have 3D teed up on the other option, but if you were to hit 3D right now, I actually just have it pulled up. It's going to look like this. So that actually that hill right behind me is Mount Sentinel. Um, the university owns a good chunk of that, University of Montana. Um, but you can actually, it's in 3D mode, everything is still interactive. So you can still click on things and figure out what they are. So this is uh, that chunk, like I said, University of Montana, they actually own 712 acres up the mountain, all the way up to the top there behind me. Um, so this is just incredibly powerful. Um, and another thing that I want to point out before we start scrolling around, go back into that 3D mode. And you're going to see an option for 3D elevation exaggeration. Now, we all know how 3D looks versus when you're actually boots on the ground looking up at a hill. And it's like, whoa, you know, it's way it's way bigger than, I, than 3D made it seem. This is where you can kind of like pull the hills up. I mean, realistically, it's probably right around there. Um, the reason why we have so much elevation or so much pull up on the right is for if you were um, in the Midwest or on the East Coast and then there is terrain, um, like some, some little valleys, some hills or whatever, this will actually pull them up and make it look more realistic like when you guys are out there. Um, so super cool here. I'll always just keep this right around here for the exaggeration level, um, but really, really cool here. Um, okay, now for scrolling around with this thing. So I am on a Mac computer right now. And actually, if you hit control, and then you're going to click, and you're going to drag. And I apologize if this looks clunky, because um, the Wi-Fi is pretty bad right now. But you can come in here, scroll. So this is the University of Montana. This is actually for Missoula. So this is the M, which you can see in the screen behind me. Um, so this, this is, you can zoom, tilt, angle, maneuver the mountains, however you want. Remember, that's just control and pull, up, down, whatever you want to do. Let that load for a second. Um, and this is awesome, like for, for scouting, like, you know, pretend this line was a trail cutting through here. 
Um, when you're looking at a bird's eye view, you can't really tell what's going on. I mean, of course, if you had topo on, you can see what's going on, but this is really cool. I mean, you can get in and be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that trail cut across such a canyon. Um, so really awesome tool. Keep that in mind, 3D feature. And we're going to go back to, we're going to go back up to this view of 2D. And then, so see how I was saying with water pops, like look at the, uh, this of the Clark Fork that runs through Missoula. So it just like pops, right? It just, it really pops. Um, keep like all these little ponds that you would have missed in satellite. Um, this is really cool here. Um, the last, last thing um, on desktop is this actual uh, weather function on the bottom right-hand corner. You can get It'll tell you the wind, precipitation, um, all this stuff. This week, hourly moon phase, you can scroll through here. It'll tell you, it'll give you the sunset chart, all this cool stuff. Um, another great planning tool here. Keep this in mind. Uh, and then, actually, I lied. One more thing before we jump into mobile. Um, so for these green, um, let's try to find a red trail. A lot of trails right now around our area are actually open. Um, they'll start closing when hunting seasons, seasons roll around, but for the most part, they're all open. So I might struggle to find one here, um, which is okay. We can just pull this random trail up in, near Frenchtown. So the green trails are still interactive and green is, is open, right? So they're not gonna be as high of detail as the featured trails that I pulled up earlier, but they're still gonna pull some information up. You can say, you know, the season dates, what you're allowed in there, the surface type. Uh, yeah, you need a plate on there, the name, ID, all that stuff. Drop a waypoint there if you want, add a photo, share it, whatever you want to do. Um, but that is kind of it for um, desktop. Now I'm going to switch over to mobile really quick and give a similar demo, but it's going to be a little different um, on the phone. Cool. Hunter, how's that look? Good to go? Good to go. Okay, cool. Um, so let's let's change it up actually. Let's get out of let's get out of Missoula. Let's go to uh let's scroll out and go down to let's go down to Moab area. Everyone knows Moab and loves Moab. Um let's scroll in here. Okay, sweet. So here we are at Moab. Again, ton of stuff going on. Um, a lot more BLM land down here. And then you're going to notice Arches National Park pops up. So that's another color that gets brought in when you're in the different parts of the country. But again, pull it up. Arches National Park. Cool. If you're confused, click on it and it'll tell you. Um, you know, you know what's what surrounds all this around uh around Moab. That's a lot of BLM land. That's that chunk in particular is almost 300,000 acres. Crazy. Um, but anyway, before we dive in here, um, if, if, uh, if you in the audience have your actual phones out and you're scrolling with this, this is something I, I, I always do before we even start diving in and start tapping stuff is uh, take your two fingers and click on the screen and pull it down. So this is going to be kind of like a tilt view. Um, I, I like this view, um, gives you a little bit more out in front, especially if you're, you're driving along and you're, you're, you know, it gives you more real estate above on the screen. Uh, if you don't like that, tilt back up, no big deal. Um, and then actually, I'm going to jump back to Missoula really quick because it's going to bring me back. So I'm going to hit this bottom right, uh, which is oriented me back to Missoula. So if you get lost scrolling, bottom right hand screen, I wish I had a cursor highlighter to show you guys, but bottom right hand corner of the screen, tap it it's gonna bring us back. Um, now, that same button that you just hit, if you actually hit it again and you turn your phone, imagine this like headlights. So if you have a waypoint up on the hill or something, you're looking and you're, you know, this thing's got me out of deep, dark holes in the middle of the night, like getting lost hunting, you know what I mean? Like you could, you can point your way back um, or if you prefer to just like train associate, um, and hold it and keep it north and south oriented. You can do that too, but think of that as like the headlight mode. Um, so again, double click that. You're gonna see the headlights come on and wherever I'm turning is looking. 
Um, so I'm actually facing I-90 now, which is back over there. Um, so pretty cool. And then to get out of that, tap that button again, and it's going to go back up um, north and south. Cool. Now let me go, let me get back to, let me get back to Moab. So again, I have the green box, so I'm covered around Moab without any service. Um, same deal with the discovery feature. You're going to hit the bottom left-hand corner here. And it's going to pull up fins and things. Um, pull this trail card up like you slide it like this. So see that little gray tab? You click it, slide it up. Um, this is where you can scroll around. Um, check if you guys are looking to get into uh, Pritchard Canyon. For those of you who've been in that area, you know that's a pretty burly route. Um, this is where you would kind of pick and choose like, oh, I'm thinking about like a, a two out of 10. Let's do Sand Flats Road. Um, click it, highlight it. There it is, Sand Flats. It'll kind of give you an idea of what you're getting into. Um, this is easy. And then, of course, you know, this rating scale, like take this with a grain of salt. Like this is going to be a very different rating depending on the vehicle you're in, of course. Right. Um, so this is just, you know, if you see a two, you can kind of consider you can be like, all right, like most all wheel drive SUVs or even cars or Subarus can probably get away with this. Um, but just keep that in mind, like the, the technical rating is just kind of like a, a, a gray area. Um, but if we also rate something at a nine, like it's it's probably a nine for a reason. So just keep that in mind. Um, same thing when you're scrolling around, like if I'm thumbing through the map, if you notice the bottom discovery feature, new trails will pop up based on location. There we go. Let's get one up here. Anyway, it's a little slow, but it's going to change based on where you're teed up on the map. Um, and then offline mode, I know we covered in, in web map quite a bit. Um, but if I were to, let's just pretend that we were back on web map and then we just, we knew we're going to, we know we're going to be in Moab. We teed it up in web map. I said, hey, here's my Moab box. Um, you're going to come in here and this is where you would click on the offline maps and you'd actually see it queued up right here. My last map I did was July 29. Um, you'd actually see it there and it would be obvious that you haven't had that downloaded. There would not be the check mark. So it would be clear and you'd see, oh shoot, there's my there's my Moab offline map that I need to download on my phone to get out. We hear all the time like, well, I downloaded on my computer. You still need to get in here and um, actually download it on your phone. This is also where your updates are going to live. So I actually have quite a few updates that I need to go through and you can either you can either update them all at once or say this uh, July 29 one, say that's the one we need uh, for whatever adventure you're doing. You click those three right dots, you can come in here and this is where you would actually uh, update it. Super fast to update it, but just like land ownership names will change. Um, it's rare that like big government lands are going to change, right? This is more for, hey, a trailhead closed or, or something like that. So keep those, keep that in mind, keep the maps updated. Um, and then we don't need to dive into my content um, tools. Same deal I, I displayed in web map. Let's say we want to, let's say we want to go up towards fins and things and say like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put a waypoint right here in the Slick Rock bike trailhead. Let's just save that. If you have some buddies you're meeting, click on that. You can either navigate to add a folder or share. If you were to share this, share item, I can send this to Hunter. He would have it and we'll know exactly where to meet. Um, and then the last feature on the um, on the phone that's that's noteworthy is this go and track. Um, so on the very bottom right hand corner, um, you're going to see go and track. Now, this is going to bring me back to Missoula because it's oriented where I'm at, but you'll see like this puck mode. Um, when it gets into this puck mode, this is how you record tracks. So if I were to record this and start walking around the building, you actually see your little breadcrumb um, pick up. Um, to get out of this, you pause it and then you have to end it. Um, and this is where you name it, do all this, cool, 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 name it or delete it. We're just going to not use that one for this. Uh, we're going to end it. We're going to delete this track. And then I actually gonna, I'm going to actually show you um, a live track or a track I did recently. One of my favorite areas to ride in Montana is going to be Pipestone. So this was a ride I did a couple 
I think a couple months ago now, but this is what that going track is going to look like when you're done with it. Um, as you can see here, I have multiple tracks kind of layered over, but let's just pretend these are, you know, one track. You can go ahead and actually click on this. Um, this was a moto I did with uh, an ambassador of ours. Um, let's do this one. We will sort of bring up the stats. It'll tell you elevation gain, how long it took, average speed. Um, my buddy Ted actually shared this because I forgot to record that day, um, but that's what it's going to look like. And you can come in here. Um, keep in mind, this was also another random track, but if you get, if Hunter were to share a track to me, I cannot go in and edit his stuff because um, then I can edit it or I can share it to the masses. And what if you say, hey, I, that was a that was a single track I didn't want anyone to know about. Like, so that's why. That's why you cannot edit other tracks that people send you. But this was a track that I actually did um, not too long ago. And this is uh, this is where, you know, we all forget. I've done it a million times. We'll, we'll get done riding or driving or whatever. Um, and then you'll notice like, oh, shoot, I had it on, on the highway the whole ride home. Um, this is where you'd come in and you would actually trim the track um, and see this slider. It's pretty obvious to see where the truck picks up or where you start riding again. Um, this one's actually good to go, but let's just pretend like, oh, you know, I would I went 80 miles home on the highway. This is where you can trim this up. Um, super, super handy feature. Keep your tracks organized. Um, this is where you can come in and edit them, rename them. Um, you can start again back to the waypoint uh, organization. This is where you can do your moto tracks, your snowmobile tracks, your overland tracks, your side by side, whatever the case may be. Um, you can start organizing this early. Let's just say, let's just change this one to, to dots. And that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be a little harder to see, so it'll hide it, um, but it is still there. Um, and that is kind of it for the app demo. Um, same deal here with the toggle. You, you have the full, full deal for satellite hybrid topo um top right corner weather all that good stuff search bar very top right hand corner same deal um oh and la actually last thing i wanted to last thing i want to talk about um for the offline maps portion so kind of a good pro tip here um if you know that you're going to be like download an offline map regardless even if you, there's like kind of service download it anyway um this is where you can actually force your phone into offline mode. So you can go in here, click it. And then this is what this does. It, it kind of puts your, your app in airplane mode. Um, so this is saying to the app, hey, Verizon, AT&T or whatever, don't try to grab a weak signal from my phone. Keep it in offline mode. Because like we'll hear all the time like, oh, you know, like it worked for a minute and then it worked, it didn't work. And then it worked for a minute is because you're going in and out of pockets, but you'll still get the occasional text at the top of the hill or whatever. So like just download the maps and force it in offline mode and you don't have to worry about anything um, and you are good to go. Um, and that is it for the app demo. Um, I know that was a, a lot and we only have an hour to cover this stuff. Um, it will be up on YouTube. Uh, don't worry, we're going to be doing a lot more of these, um, but I'm going to hand it back off to Hunter, and he is going to go over um, kind of putting the skills we learned into a scenario and how it actually play out in like a camping situation. Yeah, yeah, so thanks, Jake. Um, so I'm going to kind of combine um, some of the questions I'm seeing um, as well as kind of scenario. Um, I'm just going to do a real quick run through of how to kind of um, scope out some spots. I'm seeing questions about um, finding camp spots, um, finding trails, um, and then using offline maps. So I'm going to do a quick run through um, to kind of touch on a few of the key topics that Jake touched on, and uh, we'll, we'll run through that. Um, so I'll jump back into web map real quick. Um, and we'll, we're on a Moab trip, so we're, we're going to keep going there. Um, so you just go and, uh, and search and leave Texas up into Moab. Okay. So 
And I'm going to come from the perspective of I'm looking for um, a trail. I'm taking my wife and my kids, um, and my full size rig. Uh, so I'm not looking for something too crazy, but looking to find a, a campsite. Um, so what I'll do, uh, my, my favorite kind of go to um, feature here is the discover. Um, so I'll zoom out and the discover does pull kind of the location that you're looking at. Um, so I'll zoom out a little bit and then I'll hit that discover tab, um, pull down a little bit here. And yeah, so you can see these technical ratings, um, nine out of 10, um, that is, that's gnarly. Uh, that is for, for buggies um, and, and people ready to, to bounce off the rocks a little bit. Um, so not really looking for, for that, um, for, for my uses. So I'm gonna just kind of move around a little bit and then look in for something keep it interesting, like uh, picture frame arch here. Uh, it's technical rating three out of 10. Um, I'm not gonna be too worried. Um, I have four wheel drive, I have good clearance, um, but again, not trying to, to scare the wife and kids. So um, this is a great way to go through it. Um, an area you're not familiar with is looking at those technical ratings. So this, you can see and this kind of coloring here that kind of yellow orange um, it is on blm land uh, that is a go-to for for campsites for me um, I, I tend to find better spots better places um, and usually get a, a little bit more freedom to to get away from from uh from others um so we'll jump back on here let's see let's zoom in Okay, so what I'll do is pull up the trail I'm looking at is picture frame arch. And then if I'm looking for a spot to camp, is I'll I'll go in um, on the satellite map and I'll I'll actually zoom in. You can follow along this trail here um, and follow it along and can usually pick up clearings, uh, kind of clearly places where people have camped before. Um, and then let's let's jump out a little bit here. You can see those topo lines. You can tell you're up along a, a nice ridge. So you want a nice view. You can zoom in here. And let's say this here, I can see tire tracks. We'll drop a waypoint. Um, so I'm on a trail I like. I found I'm on BLM land. I, I found a spot that I want to go. Um, so I'll just go ahead, drop that waypoint, um, and then name it. So do Moab trip night one. Um, go in, pick the icon you want. Um, I just keep it simple. And the more you use this app, the more stuff you're gonna have on there. Um, so as Jake mentioned, um, the sooner you're kind of on the ball of organizing it, uh, you're definitely gonna thank yourself uh, as you go through. Um, so then we'll save it. That's, we'll call that our, our campsite for the night. Um, and the next step that I'm gonna do, um, now that I've, found the trail I want to go on, found the campsite I want to go, I'm going to do the offline maps. And Jake touched on it. We're just going to run through it one more time. Um, so click offline maps. Again, we are on web map. Um, we're just going to drop it real quick. Um, we'll do 10 miles wide. And then uh, name it Moab Camping Trip. Okay. Then we'll save it. And this will prompt you to remind you that you're basically making a note to download to your device. This does not automatically do it. Um, so hit OK, got it. And then from there, we now have an offline map saved. Um, usually, on a longer journey, you'll do more. Um, if you know you're going to be going down more trails, doing more adventures. But for, for time's sake, we're going to do the one. Um, and that's going to be kind of my, my scouting out um, in web map. And then from there, what I'll do is, let's see here, is I'm going to jump out of this and I'm going to go jump on to my app. Let's say that I am on the trail here. Let's see, Jake, is that, uh, is that coming up for you? Looks good. All right. So... You'll see here this kind of candy cane border. 
Um, what that means is that you have identified that area as an offline map. That's something that you want, but it means that it's not done yet. It's not downloaded. So if you see this and you're about to lose service, pump the brakes, go back, um, download it. Um, but since it's logged in on the same account here um, in my offline maps, it the one I just did on the web map, it comes up my uh, camping trip and you hit that download icon um, and it'll start downloading so you can have it. Um, so that's that's kind of the big thing is making sure that it is downloaded all the way. And um, Jake's note on hitting that go offline button. Um, so it just stays on offline mode. So it doesn't try to grab any weak signal um, in there. So that is now a usable functional offline map. Um, you can go in to your content. Uh, let's see here. And you can see that waypoint I just made on the web map is already on the app. And you can tap it, loading it. There it is. Cool. Moab trip night one. That's where we're going to stay. And let's say Jake and I are out on that trip together. We'll go in and then messages. Simple as that. I'll text it to Jake. Boom. Sent. Now he has it. Simple as that. So that kind of covers um, this real light kind of reel it in the, the nitty gritty of what we're doing. Um, and then with that, looking at timing here, we got a few minutes left. We'll uh, jump back over here and uh, let's jump into the, uh, the Q and A. All right. So let's see here. Loading here. All right. So can I import and export a GPX file? Yes. Um, I believe Jake touched on that um, on those files. Um, but yeah, you definitely can. Um, and then touching on the difference between premium and elite memberships, that's a common question we get. Um, and the, the biggest difference comes in on that, that private land data and that where you can zoom in and see who owns that land. Um, making sure you know exactly where you should be. Um, we've had people come across and um, I've heard stories of they see something, they see a, a Jeep on a piece of property and they can actually go in. Um, I've heard of people actually getting a hold of that landowner and they've purchased that Jeep just from what they've seen driving by. They jump in the app and uh, they can get in contact there. And hey, Hunter, I just saw a really good one come through the chats. Um, that'd be great to answer. Great, great, great question. Um, someone said, how would you download offline maps if you were, say, a 100-mile trail? Um, that is a great question. Um, and actually, Hunter, do you mind if I take over the screen share again? I know we're yeah. close on time, but this is an important one because it's, it's really good, especially if you're doing a multi-day um, multi deal. This is exactly what you want. All right, Hunter, do you see web map? Uh, nope, seeing uh, the questions doc there. Okay, one sec. There we go. Okay, what about now? There it is. Okay, cool. So um, this is actually I'm going to use I'm going to use an example from last year. So last year we were um, for those of you who don't know we were actually a sponsor on Ultimate Adventure. Um, for those of you who know what Ultimate Adventure is, it is like a seven day on the trail, um, pretty action packed. Um, but to go back to that question of like, hey, 100 miles of offline maps. So this was actually the route that we did on Ultimate Adventure. So this is the identical route, pretty cool. I tracked the whole thing. Um, but this is where you can come in. And if you know the route that you're going to, like, let's just say this is, you see here when I clicked offline maps, how all these boxes just teed up, there's no limit to how many offline maps you can do. So you, it, even if you wanted to like, see how I have a little tiny five mile there, these are bigger one fifties, but like do one fifties on the whole route and you're covered for 10 days of driving. Um, if you really want to get carried away and you really want to like have super detailed maps, you could do 
I don't know how many would that take probably close to hundred. Like you could get in there and dive in and, and patch all these five miles up the route. Um, I, I have them overlap a little bit, but you can like kind of block it out if that makes sense. So um, great question there. And after I can just keep this up if there's more web map questions. Um, yeah, if you want, I'm seeing some come up. Um, let's see. Uh, tips for finding new trails. Okay, tips for finding new trails. Um, that is going to be, I, I mean, there's, there's a couple ways you can do it. If you're someone that likes to, you know, sit, sit on the screen a little bit and kind of scroll and explore and, you know, the main thing comes down to like, all right, well, what does what your adventure want to be? Like, do you want a river that day? You want a lake that day? You want to get gnarly in your rig type of day? You want to just go eat some food on a cool lookout? Like, so it's, it breaks down to what you are, are looking to do. Um, but if you're in a new area, like let's go back to Moab because we're right here. Like if you're in Moab for the first time, always rely on that Discover uh, car. This is going to be the fastest way to pull up what you need to see. Um, there also is like kind of the freestyle mode. Um, like this is Green River, Utah area. This is a previous moto track that I did a couple years ago. Um, and this was like a big trip I did with a couple buddies, so like campsite waypoints, all that. But like none of this we really found on Discovery. Like it was all just kind of scrolling here and being like, oh, look, like this, this looks cool. Let's go down 10 mile wash and back out. And so there's definitely the freestyle approach or the Discovery mode. Um, those are your two main methods. Perfect. Um, I do want to mention real quick, Jake, if I can grab that uh, screen share from you. Take it away. Let's see here. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the giveaway. Um, so um, for those have, who've stuck around to the end here, we are coming up on time. Uh, we are giving away uh, 50 of our Onyx off-road bandanas. Um, so no purchase necessary. Um, you do have to have an Onyx off-road account, um, but the, the basic account is free. Um, so there's a link there, and we're also dropping that in the, in the chat there. Um, if you are watching this after it's been recorded, um, that giveaway is closed. Um, it's going to close tonight at midnight. Um, so go ahead and jump in there um, and uh, enter to win the uh, bandana there. All right, let's see. A uh, couple minutes here. Let's see if we can knock out a couple more. So I have one here. Do the routes and waypoints I save in the app translate to desktop version? Say that again, Hunter. I didn't catch that one. Do the routes and waypoints I save in the app translate to the desktop version? Yes, in both ways. Yeah. So on that, that quick run through I did, um, we did do... Um, doing waypoints and routes on the web map and it automatically loaded um, in the app. So it does work uh, the opposite way as well. And then Hunter, I know we're, maybe we can skip uh, another question here because I meant to cover this last thing and I missed it on the last two. And I've been seeing a lot of uh, comments pop up like, hey, don't forget about us in the East Coast or Midwest. Um, so can I actually just do one quick thing? I know we're coming over on, up, up on time, but if you all are good to hang on for like another minute or two, um, I would like to kind of check it out from the Midwest or East Coast perspective, because I know you guys wheel over there too. Um, and let's do it. So I'm actually going to use that same um because i mean right it is in oklahoma and texas was this this ultimate adventure um so you know when you guys we hear a lot like someone from kansas for example like hey you know there's there's no trails around me it's like there are oklahoma like there's nothing around me it's like just know that the uh the private park world is very much on our radar and we're trying to tackle that every day um that's a whole other whole other door that we're opening um but just know for for you folks in this part of the country um 
I mean, you know, there's there's not as much public land, obviously, as there is on the West Coast. Um, most states um, are like 90% and above privately owned. So there, there might not be a lot of public lands and public trails. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not trails there. Like you'll absolutely... I mean, there's, there's some very healthy chunks. Um, you know, you'll see these blue pins, like there's absolutely healthy chunks and trails scattered throughout this part of the country. It's just not going to look like Utah, Arizona, California, of course. Um, but let's zoom into this real quick. So this kind of will give you guys a taste of what a private park will, will look like. Um, sorry for the lag. So this was, I think this was day two on Ultimate Adventure. This is where we stopped here. All these cool waypoints. Um, you can see the, the boundary lines of the park here. Um, super cool. This, you know, you click on this, click on these little waypoints. So anyway, this is what it's going to look like um, for that part of the country when you're, when you're starting to think about private parks and all that good stuff. Okay, I'll stop sharing. And Hunter, I know we're over time, so we can we can close out. All right, right on. Well, thank you guys um, for tuning in. Um, we love being able to talk about the app and and being able to use it and find new adventures. Um, we love hosting these classes and getting to interact with you guys. Um, so we really appreciate it. Um, and just mentioned again, uh, this is being recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel tomorrow if you want to go back and uh, touch on anything that we covered again. Um, but that, that's all we got. Uh, appreciate you guys watching and uh, yeah, happy trails. Thanks everyone.